A South Downs Adventure, City Girl to Country Girl, by Ottie Smith, age seven. Choo-choo! It was a big day for Bella. She was going to her cousin's house in the South Downs. Her mum, who was now preoccupied helping sick patients in hospital because of the pandemic, waved her goodbye. She was going to miss her a lot. She was also going to miss the house, smells and bright lights of London. The countryside sounded boring. When the train reached Hazelmere, she saw her cousin waiting for her outside. She hadn't anticipated that she would bring a tandem bicycle. Emily had a surprise for her. They were going on a camping adventure to explore the South Downs. Boring fields, thought Bella. First, they cycled to Cowdery Ruins, an ancient castle destroyed by fire and treasure hunters. It was getting late, and they set up their camp under the dark night skies. They decided to stargaze. In the morning, they woke to see wooded hills and steep valleys cloaked in woodlands. Bella was starting to think that the countryside wasn't boring after all. Just then, fluttering past her came an Adonis butterfly over the grasslands. Bella and Emily chased after it until they reached a glistening stream full of fish. Suddenly they heard a noise and looked up. There, on the other side of the river bank, was a beautiful otter. After breakfast, they set out on their bicycle down leafy country lanes. What Bella didn't know was that Emily had another surprise waiting for her. They were going horse riding. They climbed on the horses, which were magnificent, and rode until they reached the South Downs Ridge. Here they spotted buzzards riding the thermals above. The views were breathtaking, and they could see all the way to the coast. The adventure continued in this way over the weeks that followed. Together, Bella and Emily explored the South Downs, from Amberley Museum to pebbled beaches and the chalk cliffs at Seven Sisters. By now, Bella no longer missed the bright lights of London and had grown to love the South Downs. Maybe her time away had taught her about the beauty of the countryside. When her mum was no longer so busy in the hospital, Bella was asked to go home. She arrived at Hazelmere Station with tears in her eyes. Don't worry, said Emily. There's always more fun and adventures to be had here next holiday. A Place to Remember by Holly Lambert, aged 11. Aria tumbled out of bed, hitting her alarm violently as she flung herself over to her wardrobe. She tugged on a pair of old dungarees and stripy top and pulled her hair into a messy bun. She picked up her silver locket engraved with an azure blue swirly A and did up the clasp. She grabbed her large black satchel and started rapidly packing torch, blanket, hoodie, three apples, a packet of plain digestives, phone charger and a map. She also packed a small red purse with a gold clasp and put a handful of coins, enough for the train ride. She looked at the dirty window. Condensation dripped down slowly, creating a small puddle on the windowsill. She looked out at the busy London street and sighed. She had to get away. She opened the door silently her keys jangling in the red coat pocket. She stepped out the door and mounted her scarlet red bike. She placed her satchel in the wicker basket. She took one last breath at the polluted London air and pubs and the shouts and loud music of the teenagers down at the park and set off down the road. The bright streetlight shone all around her and she could barely hear any bird song. She boarded a bus followed by a train and finally made it to the tiny village called Amberley. She'd only been here once, but she felt like she'd lived here her whole life. Aria walked round past the quiet tea room. She dodged past a handful of cyclists. Suddenly, 
A young boy around the age of 14 with chestnut brown hair and bright blue eyes strolled past, whistling a tune she could vaguely recognise but couldn't put her finger on it. Excuse me, sir, she called to the boy. Yes, answered the boy. She looked down at her scuffed Converse boots. Do you know the way to the churchyard? The boy pointed towards the lane filled with thatched cottages and cats roaming the streets. She set off clutching her satchel, breathing in the sweet-smelling flowers. She arrived at the big stone and flint church and sighed. This was the moment she'd been waiting for her whole life. She walked along the thin rows of graves, the ox-eye daisies waving their heads at her. She sat by the huge grave, the swirly writing spelt out, Madeline Murray. Suddenly, it all came back to her. The smell of wildflowers, the squawks of the peacocks sitting high up on the wall. She remembered the hours she spent exploring the woods, making dens and splashing in the River Arran. Aria looked up at the trees' tops and saw fragments of sun shining through like a broken glass bottle spilling its contents. She heard the different calling from numerous birds, the high-pitched whistles and low-sounding chorus lines. She smelt the sweet smell of lavender and roses climbing up the wall of the red brick houses. This was it. This was always what she wanted. A place to remember. A Reflection at the End of the World by Jude Tedder, aged 14. An awakening layer of peace glides from the ocean, fluttering in the wind before sitting beside me. I try to listen to its simple whisper, the methodical pulsing of the ocean's waves. The godlike white walls encourage me to watch them prosper, and I happily surrender to their superiority. I take a deep breath in and tune out of stress. I tune into the bold, charismatic rhythm of the wind and the sea. The fire crackles and bursts with life, warming the night like a blanket on my soul. I sat by the end of the world and wondered if I can rest any longer. I can delay my future temporarily, but the simple fact is that life runs faster than me. The long time between now and the future is going to implode and I will be left with no way to move. Why is time like this? Why am I like this? The Seven Sisters is the end of the horizon. It is the end of time. It is the end of everything. And it is a magnificent thing. Why should I care about the future? I sit above the clouds, above the end of time, watching the perfection of life spring up with me. I might have to do something about the future, but I will enjoy it. Why am I like this? Because I want time to run at me.